Hello, welcome to another Wilderness Tamed video. In this one, we're going to be pruning a shrub. One of my least favourite shrubs, Budlia. Um, they're very popular and I admit, I hold my hands up higher than that. Um, I did used to have Budlia in my own garden, but I did follow the rule of deadheading it after it finished flowering, because if you let them go to seed, ooh. We have two Budlia here and here. Um, so clearly been pruned pretty well in the past <laughs> by me obviously um, deadheaded and I and I'm sort of through the late summer when they're in flower as soon as they start going brown they're off um, so now they need a good spring pruning um, just to take some more height off and get some stronger sturdier growth and also it prevents them just getting too big and leggy and, and out of hand because they're fairly brittle stemmed a bit like uh, Lava Terra the sort of hollyhock bush um, in that they're quite fibrous brittle stemmed and if they get too much weight on the top they can split and then that can allow fungal infections to get in uh, which will obviously kill them off so we're going to follow the same pruning rules that we do for roses and most other shrubs thin spindly stuff out any dead stuff out, uh, any stems that are rubbing, take out the weakest one. Um, and the thinner the stem, the harder back you cut it. So this weedy specimen here, I'll take back to those two, first two buds there. Stronger stems like these, I'll probably leave a little bit more uh, height to them uh, and maybe not take them back to sort of three or four buds from the joint. Um, let me demonstrate thus, with my trusty secateurs in hand. So this weedy specimen here, right out. This one here, down. Uh, this dead stuff here can take out. Take that out. Definitely take that one at the back out. It doesn't got any life on it. I'm going to get the loppers for these because they're a little bit too thick for the, the old secateroonies. Oh God, did I just say that? Blimey. Yeah, all this tatty stuff down here. Um, that's a fairly sturdy stem. Some raggedy frosted bits of growth there. But... Uh, Mm, actually, yeah, I'm going to take that down to there. So, same with roses. You've got, I mean, Budlia produce opposite pairs of buds, whereas roses are sort of alternate pairs. Um, so, if this was a rose, you would cut it above the joint and angled down away from it, thus. But with this Budlia, it's going to angle it that way slightly. Um, and I doubt that will reproduce anything, but we might get something from down below. Uh, these stems are fairly, fairly vigorous, fairly strong. I th I'm still tempted to take them down to this sort of height, so... That jibber jobber there, a little bit oh, just above that bud. Uh, this is, you can see that rub in there. I mean, I know that is the, let's get it in focus, that is the, the one it's rubbing against. So that's technically the thinner one, but I'm going to take this stem down to somewhere here. So this thinner one, that's a fairly healthy growth there. I'll take that out to there. Uh, this one, actually going to go lower. It's the next pair of decent buds. 
Um, and this one has a little pair of buds there. Just one by itself, but there's a fairly decent pair there. Um, oh, what a dilemma. Yeah, we'll go for that one, see how it goes. There you go. So, other than coming back with the loppers to remove that uh, and that, you can't see what I'm looking at. Other than coming back with the loppers to remove that and that, uh, that's that one pretty much done. Obviously, we'll come back and clear up the debris. A bit more to do on this one. Start at the bottom, maybe we'll work our way around it. So, I'm gonna Get rid of that. Thin spindly one here. Um, take that right back. Dead stuff. Spindly, spindly, spindly. As we say up north, it's no use to man the beast. In fact, that one can come out all together. Um, that's a thinning, take him down to there, but that's a nice one. Nice pair of buds there. Take them off there. It's a fairly thin one down to the bottom. Down to the bottom. Uh, do all the stuff I can reach without moving around too much. So some dead stuff there to come out. Uh, that little spindly one to come out there. Um, in there, do that one there, that one out, that one there, that one there, slightly taller ones, that's a decent bud there, a nice pair of buds there. Uh, spindly chipper jobbers, get rid of them. Thinly thing there, thin one there, and get that off there. There's a some pair of buds on that. Some pair of buds there. Okay. That's a good healthy stem. We'll uh, take them back to there. Not too much off. Come around the other side. Stand on some of this yellow leaf strife. So it doesn't matter if that survives or not. Spindly stuff out, dead stuff out. That's completely dead. Down there. Nothing that's completely dead. Uh, that's a bit spindly, so we'll take them right back to there. A dead branch there out, spindly one, dead one, dead one. So if you follow the dead stuff out, and anything growing into the middle as well, I mean, it, it's not that vital with buddleia that you create the sort of goblet silhouette like we've done with roses and fruit trees in the past. Um, but uh, still that's a spindly one. I don't like the way it's growing so he's out. <laughs> and don't be afraid to be ruthless with these things. In fact, I would say dig him out and put him on a funeral pyre would be uh, too good for them. I've gone right off them as they're just, yeah, anyway. People say, oh, they're wildlife friendly, good for the bees and the butterflies. Well, yeah, they are if you want to get your insects addicted to a nectar source and then neglect all the surrounding native wildflowers. Then 
like beekeepers will say, oh, Himalayan balsam is great for the bees. Is it? Is it really? See, my argument to that is, I'd rather have our native bees expending their valuable time and energy on pollinating native plants rather than thuggish invasive weeds that destabilise riverbanks blah 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 and all the other nasty things that Himalayan balsam does such as smothering out lower growing stuff uh, I think that is pretty much all I've just spotted a little little dead stump just there look oh, it's got a bit of life on it further up but it's not worth it it's just not worth it Gov there we go so not a massive amount off the height on that one um, as I mentioned before you can be brutal and you could literally treat them as a as you would treat a rose and take them off it um, you know, 15, 20 centimetres above ground. Um, for those of you working in black and white, that's, I don't know, 32, 60 fourths of an inch is some stupid measurement. Um, <laughs> yeah, main imperial measurements, gotta love them. Not. Aye, there you go, it's, it's fairly straightforward operation. Um, and now I've just got to clear up the debris. But whilst we're on, down here, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you from something we did, oh, I think it was last, no, the year before last. Ah, the year before last. See this little clump here? These are the spiked speedwell that we propagated from cuttings. Um, so there's at least one that survived and is forming a nice little clump. And somewhere over here, oh yeah, there's a better clump, the same thing, spiked speedwell. For some reason, the purple loosestrife doesn't seem to have survived. I can hear a cheer going up from the United States because <laughs> uh, they don't like purple loosestrife. But here, it's a delight. I'm not aware of it causing any problems in the UK. Um, I'd rather see our riverbanks covered in purple loose strife than Himalayan balsam any day. So here we go. Quick tidy up. And uh, a few years ago I did shift both of these Budlia. They were further over there and they were causing a bit of a blind spot into the garden for the clients when they were sat on the patio. Um, so I thought we'll shift the buddleia and use them as a more of a backdrop plant uh, and have some attractive stuff in front. Um, but before I did that, I took some cuttings uh, and one of them has survived. Now I'll bring you over into the strawberry patch where I put the buddleia cuttings because you know why wouldn't you um, now I know it doesn't look like much because I just pruned it last week um, but this is in fact a well uh, a well uh, rooted buddleia cutting and that was basically what I took as the cutting didn't have that bit on um, in fact that was just a green leafy bud and that's what I've just pruned back so it's um, hardwood stick cuttings that's what went into the ground and I took three three or four of those from those two shrubs I've just pruned um, which was in the, it was an autumn pruning and uh, just propped them in the ground here and as I say out of the three that one's rooted very well um, so that could probably be lifted and planted up in the border somewhere slightly more prominent than having it in amongst the raspberries and strawberries so you probably could I don't know I've never tried it this time of year you probably could snip that off there cut that below that leaf node there uh, prog that in the ground up to just below the two buds 
uh, and it, it may well root. Um, but as I say, it's more a winter or autumn job taking hardwood cuttings or stick cuttings. Um, and that's all there is to it. Oh, that's a cheeky little dead stem on that buddleia. Just get rid of you. Ha! Thought you'd got away with it. Aye, so that is pruning buddleias, and as I say, the same rules would apply to many other garden shrubs. Um, similar to the hydrangea that we, we've done previously as well. So, um, so there you have it folks. I'll leave you with a nice image of some slowly dying amputated buddleia stems. Can you hear the screams? Mm -hmm.